I'm going to show you precisely what an AI voice pack will do for you, what it will bring to a game and how it might best suit your gameplay. Firstly, we should take a look at the voice pack manual for Frontiers Elite Dangerous and see what these commands are and what they do. This manual is included with every voice pack that we provide. The first command we're going to use is the launch command. This will simply execute the launch sequence, like this. Launch. Acknowledged. Powering up. Onboard scanning complete. Final checks to ascent thrust vector controls complete. Stand by for launch. Once the launch command is executed, the ship will be positioned for takeoff from the pad. Then, the docking clamps will be released. At that point, if the coast is clear, you can then use the command to raise the ship up from the pad with the departure handover command. Ship restraints withdrawn. Departure authorized. Departure handover. Stand by. I'm engaging thrusters and bringing up the landing modules. Distancing to 30 meters. The departure handover command does two things. One, it will raise the ship approximately 30 meters from the landing pad and stop. Two, raise the landing gear. This takes place very quickly in about four or five seconds, after which you'll have full control of the ship for flight. For using the throttle, it's best to keep in mind that increments of 10% should be used in most situations. So if you'd like to apply 10% power to thrusters, then simply use the command thrusters 10% or a more appropriate velocity depending. Thrusters 20%. 20% thrusters. Increments of 25% at a time are also an option and these can be applied the same way as the thruster commands. 25% thrusters, 50% thrusters and so on. Or if you prefer, you can use what are known as impulse commands one quarter impulse, half impulse, three quarter impulse, and full impulse, which is 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. Here's an example. Half impulse. Half impulse. Three quarter impulse. Three quarter impulse engaged. Full impulse. Maximum impulse. Now we'll take a look at how the menus function. In the ship, there are holographic panels to the left, right and centre. These panels contain menus that you will frequently use. Let's see that in action as the navigation menu is selected for use. Left panel. Right panel. Finished. The panels can be called upon in a few ways. You can either use the commands left panel or right panel, and this will open them up. Alternatively, and of course when you're familiar with the panels, you can simply pull them up by menu item name, like this. Navigation. Navigation. Contacts. Contacts. Modules. Modules. Navigation. Navigation. Next, we'll ready the ship for a jump. The Engage Supercruise command will engage the ship's jump drive for fast travel within a star system, perhaps to a nearby planet or another station. Otherwise, you can use this System Jump command, which will have the ship engage the jump drive for interstellar travel to another star. System jump now, please. Affirmative. Preparing for jump. Interstellar velocity at maximum. Key systems are at optimal levels, readying for exit. 
now. Using the panel command for the navigation menu, we'll head back to the other system and dock at the station. Navigation. Navigation. Finished. System jump now, please. Affirmative. Preparing for jump. Interstellar travel mode engaging now. Hyperspace checking systems now. Complete. Scanning for anomalies, none detected. Isn't that good? You might encounter a surprise visit from an aggressive pirate from time to time. Let's see what happens when we get into a little trouble. Targeting, power management, weapons and countermeasures will likely be required. If you're really in trouble, you may need to get the hell out of Dodge and fast. Power the weapons. Max weapons. Deploy weapons. Deploying and readying weapons. Target hostile. Lock target. Launch countermeasures. Deploying chaff. We're not going to win this fight. We should leave. Security camp. Oh, Vatican. Defense Protocol Alpha. Engaging exit protocols, retracting weapons, attempting jump, standby. Boosting thrust. Half impulse. Half impulse engaged. Power to shields. Transferring power to systems. The defense protocol got us out of trouble there. It's one of the combo commands, and it's designed to retract the weapons, transfer power to the shields, and engage the drives for supercruise. It works well if you're a bit like me when it comes to a scrap with a pirate. That and multitasking isn't one of my strong points. You can use the command to disengage from supercruise back to thruster velocity in normal space. You'd normally disengage from supercruise once you've reached a destination in a system. The command is simply disengage. Supercruise drive disengaging. The next commands used prior to docking, now that we're out of supercruise, are both power management to give us a little speed and the boost engines command to temporarily give us a full burn from the thrusters. That's because we have about three or four kilometers to travel, and we don't want to take all day. Link on Papa Alpha Uniform. Comms link established. Please approach the station at a safe speed and give way to larger vessels, Commander. Power to engines. Power diverted to engines. Boost engines. Boosting now. Full impulse. Maximum impulse. Engaged. Before we land here, we'll need authorization from the station. Request docking. Requesting docking clearance. Request approved. Sit down on landing pad 1-1. One, one. 
Shields for landing, don't you think? Yes, please. Power diverted to shields. Occasionally, you will be prompted to confirm recommended or preemptive commands. I don't mean to take over here, but shouldn't we deploy landing modules about that? Yes. Right. Lowering landing gear. As well as thousands of responses, our voice packs also have a great deal of information at your disposal. Hundreds of facts about space, the galaxy, and much more. I need to know something. What is a nebula? Acknowledged. Verity, why don't you explain? Okay. A nebula is an interstellar cloud of dust, hydrogen, helium, and other ionized gases. Originally, nebula was a name for any diffuse astronomical object, including galaxies beyond the Milky Way. The Andromeda Galaxy, for instance, was referred to as the Andromeda Nebula, and spiral galaxies in general as spiral nebulae. Before the true nature of galaxies was confirmed in the early 20th century by Edwin Hubble, Vesto Slipher, and others. She knows about all of the 88 constellations and much more. Yes, but you know an awful lot about nebulae. So, tell me about the Pleiades Nebula. Pleiades Nebula, or Seven Sisters, is an open star cluster containing middle-aged hot B-type stars and is located in the constellation of Taurus. It is among the nearest star clusters to Earth and is the cluster most obvious to the naked eye when viewed from planet Earth's surface. The cluster is dominated by hot, blue, and extremely luminous stars that have formed within the last hundred million years. Dust that forms a faint reflection nebulosity around the brightest stars was thought at first to be left over from the formation of the cluster, hence the alternative name Maya Nebula after the star Maya, but is now known to be an unrelated dust cloud in the interstellar medium through which the stars are currently passing. Computer simulations have shown that the Pleiades was probably formed from a compact configuration that resembled the Orion Nebula. Astronomers estimate that the cluster will survive for about another 250 million years, after which it will disperse due to gravitational interactions with its galactic neighborhood. Also, the celestial entity has several meanings in different cultures and traditions. We're in Constellation Taurus. Hmm. Tell me about Constellation Taurus. Verity, would you explain that for the commander? Acknowledged. Taurus is a large and prominent constellation in the Northern Hemisphere's winter sky. It is one of the oldest constellations, dating back to at least the early Bronze Age, when it marked the location of the sun during the spring equinox. Taurus came to symbolize the bull in the mythologies of ancient Babylon, Egypt, and Greece. Fascinating. You can also go on a nebula tour and have Orion here plot the course for you with the following command. Set course for Rigel. Stellar cartography. Setting course for Rigel in constellation Orion. All you have to do is click plot course. You can then close the galaxy map, close galaxy map, exiting map, and then use the command next system in route, selecting next destination. It will choose the next system on your route and then you can simply make the jump. System jump now, please. Affirmative. Preparing for jump. An extraordinary amount of work and love has gone into making the voice packs, all to bring you 
the most immersive and best experience possible. And there's much more to come yet.